few days ago, the third investigation has been opened in order to explain the mysterious death of Marco Pantani. Two previous investigation cases concluded that the murder hypothesis is only a conjecture and that death resulted from voluntary, massive overdosing of cocaine and antidepressant drugs. But Pantani's family believes that there are still truths to tell about the death of the pirate. The new investigation starts from the role of the pusher, Fabio Miradoza, the one who supplied Pantani with cocaine. He was the one who declared in 2019 that the cyclist had been killed. Let's briefly reintroduce Marco, although I am pretty sure this iconic figure is well known to anyone interested in pro cycling. Pantani's greatest successes came at the peak of massive, almost unrestricted blood doping in Europe. He won Tour de France and Giro d'Italia in 1998, in the year of big Festina scandal. In the eyes of UCI, he was the one who might restore reputation of the sport, but in the end, he had been publicly crucified. His legacy is unquestionable. By many experts, Pantani is considered as the best climber in cycling history. It's enough to say he still holds climbing record up Alpe de US, established by him in 1997. Anyway, the kind of charisma and style of the pirate isn't met today in pro peloton. What's hard to imagine, in the 90s, in Italy, Pantani was even more popular than best football players. There is a dedicated statue in Cesenatico, his hometown, which reminds about the scale of Pantani's impact on the sports culture. For me personally, Marco is one of the most inspiring athletes with unique riding style, posterized many times. In terms of signature moves and the impact on his discipline, I could even compare him to Michael Jordan. Once he crossed finish line, he was closing his eyes and rising hands to heaven. But what made him unique among other riders was his extraordinary climbing technique. Whenever the gradient increased on the climb, instead of changing gear, he just moved his hands to the drops and rose out of the saddle to casually push the same gear over the steep. For sure, upper body strength is crucial in this position. But the more muscles are engaged, the more oxygen is needed, which might raise heartbeat significantly. From this reason, it's unbelievable for how long Pantani was able to climb in drops. He definitely mastered his position like no other. I heard even some rumors about UCI exploring the test against EPO, so it would take into account the time riders spent climbing in the drops. The big fall of Marco started after disqualification from Giro d'Italia in 1999, because of too high hematocrit level detected in his blood. From this point, he faced persistent allegations of doping throughout the rest of his career. There were evidence connecting him to Francesco Conconi and infamous Eufemiano Fuentes. Finally, in July 2013, it was confirmed that Pantani has tested positive for EPO during retroactive testing of samples from the 1998 Tour de France. Till 2004, Pantani was active rider. However, he was dealing with anxiety and depression, but above of all, addiction to cocaine. It was harder and harder for him to build shape needed to compete at the highest level. In 2004, on Valentine's Day, Pantani was found dead in a cheap hotel in Rimini. Autopsy revealed heart failure and the coroner diagnosed cocaine poisoning. Here is what happened earlier according to hotel receptionist Lucia D. At 10.30 am, Marco called reception asking to come up immediately claiming there were some people annoying him. Lucia went up the stairs but didn't find anyone in the corridor. Also, she didn't hear any voices in the Pantani's apartment. At the same time, she met Larissa, the lady who cleans the rooms. Larissa reported that no one replied when she knocked the door. 
Lucia decided to make a call from the empty room next door to Pantani's apartment. Again, Pantani complained that there were some people disturbing him, but didn't provide any details and ended the call. At 10.55 am, Pantani called again repeating the same story, but this time asked the res receptionist to call the police. Lucia and Larissa went upstairs again. They were trying to open the door but couldn't do this as they were blocked by some piece of furniture from the inside. Of course, confused woman informed the owner of the hotel what's happening, but he made hard to explain decision not to call the police. Having said all of that, I wouldn't be surprised if Pantani had been murdered. His addiction to cocaine created dangerous relations with wrong people. He simply might know too much. Anyway, whatever new comes up, at the very beginning and in the end of his fall, there were always drugs. It is no secret money providers, after years and years of using performance enhancing drugs, were experiencing depression and mental health issues. Sometimes it led to alcohol or cocaine addiction. Not everyone survived. His addiction started around the time of disqualification from Giro di Italia in 1999. In my opinion, he was singled out and shown to the public as false proof of fight with doping. No one could get close to him, he felt attacked and isolated. In some way, thanks to Pantani, other dopers were shielded, as he attracted most of the attention. But there is yet another mystery. In the months surrounding Marco's death, number of riders also died for heart-related reasons. Here is the list involving some of them. Denis Zanette, cardiac arrest during dental visit. Marco Ceriani, heart attack during workout. Fabrice Salanson, heart attack in sleep. Marco Rusconi, heart attack during birthday party. Jose Maria Jimenez, heart attack during visit in hospital. Johan Salomon, heart attack in sleep after training. Alessio Galetti, heart failure during race. Ubdalo Mesa, cardiac arrest while warming up. 